Hi everyone, it's Marietta and today I'm going to talk about how to start online business and then expand to the US. So this is actually a question that I receive um, through our Facebook page and I'm going to read the question and I'm going to answer it. And before I start, I'm going to wait for some of you to log online and we're going to have a little chat like where are you guys from and if you have any question for me, you can totally post them below this video. And before I even start this conversation, I want to mention there is a free brochure that you can download, which is either above this video or below this video. And it's basically about how I'm going to describe my journey in that free brochure and then how you can actually get your investor or other type of visa, depending if you qualify or not. So welcome everyone and let's start. So the question is, hi Marietta, thanks for your info that you provide. I would like to start online business in Morocco, my country, in my country. And when time comes, I want to register in the US. What kind of steps should I take? And then how long does it going to take? Can this grant me immigration card? Immigration card, he probably talks about green card. How much funds will I need? So let's break it down. Okay. First of all, <clears throat> the question is if you can start, um, if you can get a visa with online business. Yes, you can. You can get a visa with online business. So if you start your online business and the online business will expand and will be successful, you can later on expand to the US, even though it's online business. Um, so if you are from a treaty country, for example, E2 investor visa has only a list of eligible countries and these countries are called the treaty countries. And for you, because you are from Morocco, you are from the treaty country, so you do qualify. Um, that means that you can apply and you can plan ahead all the necessary steps for you to apply at some point and expand to the US. So I would say definitely start a business in your home country. In your case, that would be Morocco. And maybe within a year or two, you will be able to expand to the US. So what would be the first step? The first step would be to open your company. Um, your company, I'm, what I mean by that is limited liability company, LLC, or possibly corporation. Normally I advise to open limited liability if it's, if it's just one person. So if you are your, the only founder, then I say go ahead with a limited liability LLC. So then you, would, you will start first your LLC. You can start your LLC. Um, hi, Mohamed. Where are you from? I want to know if it's if what is the easy way to come to the US. So, okay, so easy way. There is no easy way to tell you the truth. Um, there are two ways. One way is a non-immigrant visa, which only allows you to live there temporarily, and another way is a green card that is the permanent way. Uh, if you want to live there permanently, you have to look for a green card. Now, there are several ways um, how you can get a green card. Why don't you search on YouTube five ways to get a green card, which I did the video on this topic, and you will have a general idea how to get the visa. I'm um, sorry, green card. Now, this today's topic is how you start your business and expand to the US, which is fairly okay way. It's not that it's not that difficult as, as it might seem. So first you would start company. This company you can start online. I mean, you don't need to be physically present in the US. You can hire someone who can uh, start incorporate your business. Um, and once you incorporate a business, you have the company, the LLC, as I mentioned, then you need to wire the funds. Now E2, particularly this kind of visa are for people who will invest. And oftentimes people are so scared, like, oh my God, like, how can I, how can I even get there? Like if I, if I, if I don't have enough money, like for example, what if I don't have $200,000, um, then, then what? Well, then nothing you can, you can get 
less than you can invest less than 200,000 and you can sh you should be fine. So what I'm saying like don't be afraid start your business especially like this this question is relating to online business. This person was asking me if he can start online business in his own country and later on expand. Definitely. So start a business and then later you can invest into your into your company in the US that is affiliated. You can invest how much money do I need to have in bank account? Okay, so when you're investing, it really depends on what kind of business. Tell me more about your company. What are you thinking, Mohammed? What kind of business? What kind of company? So I can be more specific. But if you want to start online business, like even if you, for example, if you invest $50,000, you should be fine with that. Um, so then you will wire the money from your account in your home country to this corporate account. Corporate account means this is account that is your company account, the newly established company in the US, and then you will wire the money to this corporate account. So basically, if you wire 50,000, that is fine as long as it's substantial. There is no limit or there is no set minimum and maximum by the government. So basically, you can wire substantial amount invest substantial amount into your business all right so let's talk about food business like you talking about the food business if you want to open pakistani food business how much do you you actually need to do your own research like how much do i need in order to open food business in that particular location so for example if you want to uh, rent a space for the store or a restaurant then I would suggest it usually it's about 100, 150. It's not under 50,000. However, if you have online business, consulting online business, you should be okay with 50,000. You know what I mean? So in your case, like if you need, <coughs> if you need, if you want an open restaurant, that might be more expensive. So substantial amount of investment means that you will invest enough in order to jumpstart the business. So this is very relative. It really depends what kind of business we're talking and what is the location. If there is no physical location, if it's just an online business, then obviously you will have you will have um, less expenses compared to actual physical location, right? Truck shop. Yes, you can totally, you mean like a truck driving business? Yes, I did have a client like that and he bought, he invested into trucks. I think the one truck costed him like, probably like, if I'm not wrong, 50 or $60,000, maybe 30. And then he invested like into more, into two. Uh, and you can totally do business like that. Make, make sure to do business uh, market research. That is important. Because oftentimes people ask me, what kind of business I suggest to invest to, but I'm lawyer, immigration lawyer, so I'm not necessarily business consultant, you know what I mean? So I always uh, advise them to, uh, to, to make research. But yes, with that money um, up to 100, 150, you should be fine. So you don't have to ha invest like half a million, one million, which is another topic, EB5. And I'm happy to discuss that topic, but different day, different time. So, okay. So once you start the LLC, you wire the money to the account. Now today, my friend asked me, today, my friend asked me if he needs, <coughs> excuse me, if he needs um, to, to fly to US, if he wants to open, if he wants to open account. Yes, he needs to fly to the US if, if he wants to open an account. Like lawyer cannot should not be able to open an account for you. You can hire you can you can have a manager of your company or you can have a business partner in the US who will who will open the account for you if you have um, two people doing business or you can find a manager. Um, but if it's just you, you will need to get temporary visa, B visa, B1 slash B2 and fly to the US and open your account on uh, when, when you have this B visa, you will be able to fly and open the account. So you will have, when you set up the company, you will have the 
corporate documentation that you will submit in the bank and then you will be able to open that account. So once you open the account, then you will wire the money. And when you wire the money, you have to document every single transaction. So if you are using the money uh, from your personal account, you have to wire it and document every single wire. So if you have just one single wire, then you document how you're wiring the money from your account. Let's say it's savings in your personal account and then it goes from your personal to your corporate. So it's one single wire. So you will document the outgoing and incoming wire. And where do you document this? This is part of your application package, E2 visa application package. So it's important to keep every single transaction. You have to document everything. If you plan to, uh, if you plan to, Thank you so much for your likes guys thank you so much for your heart and by the way thank you so much for your questions keep them coming um, and by the way if you like this what i'm talking about here go ahead and share this video with your friends so more people can come and join us now during this live q a thank you so then you wire the money and when you wire the money you document everything if you want to have multiple sources of your funds. Let's say you will borrow 50% of the money from a friend, another 50 you have from your savings. So then you have to document every single source. So if you are using your savings, you will have to document um, by bank statements, recent bank statements that you have enough money, how the money got there. If you are um, borrowing the money, then I recommend to have a loan agreement and this loan agreement should be secured. So what does it mean? If you are, if you're going to borrow money from a friend, make sure that there is a collateral security. So in other words, what happens if you don't return the money till a certain day, right? So that is the security. Now, this is very important because what if you have a gift from your parents, for example, or your wife, spouse, whatever, and you want to use that money, um, then what? Well, if you have a gift, you can use it legally. The gift can be used as a legal source of investment, but the risk of investment is, is rather low. So I always suggest that you combine it. If you have a partially a gift, then get a loan because it's so important to establish that you as an entrepreneur investor is, is bearing a risk of investment. And you also need to establish that your funds are being committed. So what does this mean? If you send 50,000 to the US corporate account, then what does it mean? Like that funds are committed. Well, if you just wire them there and they're just going to sit there, uh, you're not going to get your visa. You have to invest. You have to invest or be in the process of investing. So for example, now you're asking me, Mohamed, uh, I want to open a food shop in shape like moving truck. Okay, so in, in your case, you would need to really buy that truck. You know what I mean? Like you would have to invest into that truck. I don't know how much the truck costs, maybe 10,000, 15 and 20. So if you invest, you buy the truck, then your funds are being committed. So you are, you are showing by the evidence that you actually purchased the truck, that your funds are being committed, that you are serious about this business. and. If, you're ha if you have the funds from your own sources, personal savings or, or a secure loan, then you should be fine. So you need to really keep this in mind because sometimes, you know, people think that when they just borrow the money or they got the money as a gift, it's enough. It's not. It's not because you need to show that you are at risk with this business. You as E2 investor, not the person who borrowed you the money. You know what I mean? So it's so important to be aware of this. And also another thing is like, as I mentioned before, the amount of investment, because I know there are, <clears throat> there are many people who actually think that you have to invest like 200, 300,000 with this visa category. No. I and mean, especially if you do online business, like I work with people who launched online software, online 
courses and they definitely didn't have to invest 100,000. Um, so really you can be creative and that's the beauty. You can create online cool business. Let's say you are, you have a marketing digital agency and you want to expand with your services to the US, even though you are providing online services and you have clients in the US and they are paying you to your US company, you still need um, this kind of visa even though you are doing this work online because you are in fact making money from the clients in the US. If you would be charging them under your company overseas um, and while the whole work is done online, then it's fine, it's not illegal. Now the question is if it's illegal if you are doing the work online and you have the company overseas that is basically invoicing the client in the US and you are physically present in the US. That, you know what I mean? Like it, it's questionable and I think that it, if you are if you are invoicing the client in the US is physically present, I would say and you there on B visa, I say it's illegal. So you need E2 visa. Okay, so what's the the other question was <clears throat> what kind of steps do I need to take? Can this grant me immigration card? Not directly. E2 visa is not going to grant you immigration, uh, the green card. And here is why. E2 visa are non-immigrant visa for people who want to do business in the US. The thing is you can do business and you can be on this visa technically forever because you can keep extending this visa and you should be fine. Even if you keep extending, um, now in order to extend, you have to show that the business is profitable and there is, and you are paying taxes. So there is not even a requirement like you have to hire someone. You need to manage the business yourself actively. Um, for example, if you buy real estate property, there is passive investment. You're not really managing it actively. On the other hand, if you buy the property, and then you flip it and or you do seasonal rentals, you are managing it actively. So it's a lot of work. In that case, you're not necessarily in the business of passive investment into real estate, but it's active business. So you will be able to qualify. So that is the difference. Now, um, it doesn't lead to green card directly because the green card there are ways how you can obtain it. And I'm talking about EB5 green card. Um, number one way is that you invest directly $1 million into any kind of commercial enterprise and you create 10 full-time positions within two years. There is another way you invest half a million into regional centers. There are so many regional centers, I think around 1,000. And these are the government by governmentally approved projects. Now you invest and it's sort of a fund. So you don't manage the money. They manage it for you and you do not need to directly create 10 full-time positions. The question is if it's a good investment. You have to be careful there because some of them are claiming to be good but not necessarily. Um, and then a third option is that when you invest 50,000 into into areas with high unemployment rate, targeted employment areas. Now, this is the only way how you get EB-5. However, if you invest into your business, you get E2 and later on the business is doing great. You can, you can actually invest more than 50,000 or you might be able to invest 1 million, reinvest into your own company and hire 10 full-time people, then you should be fine. You should be able to actually get EB-5 green card. So there is a way how you can directly, indirectly get EB-5. So that's the answer to your question. Um, the next question was how much funds will I need? So that's, I already discussed how much funds because it's really, it's not necessarily um, set. There's no minimum, there is no maximum, which is amazing because you have a high chance of be able to actually um, make it happen. 
especially if you are considering to start online business. So I hope I answered this question well. Um, another thing is that with this E2, you should be able to live there um, at least um, at least two years. Um, at least two years. Some people will receive this visa for five years, so then they don't have to worry about the extension later. They should be able to receive it. Uh, they should be able to live it, live there for two years. However, uh, even if you have the five-year visa stamp in your passport, um, then you can't live there longer than two years. So there is difference between the visa and the, the, the legal status. So in the US, the maximum status on this visa category is two years. So this is one way. Another way is, for example, if you are not from a tree country that I was discussing at the beginning of today's live Q&A, then you should, you can um, start a business in your country and wait. Wait for at least one year because this would be L visa. An L visa is a visa for anybody who wants to create affiliate office uh, in the US and is not from the treaty country. And this person can do it as a manager or owner or executive and will open the affiliated office. So it's very similar process. The difference is this. This L visa, they are looking at whether you are in this business, whether this is already established business in your home country. And if you are establishing this affiliated office, you will get the visa for only one year. Now, if your office is already established in the US, this is usually a case for like big, bigger companies um, and they are sending you as a manager, they will send you for three years. The problem with this visa is that the maximum length is is uh, only seven years and then you cannot extend which kind of sucks so then you have to either apply for a green card eb1 category thank you so much for your likes guys or or you're done you're done with the us because you cannot extend it now you as a manager or owner of the company you don't want to be done with the us right you want to be managing the visa in the us so it's it's sort of um on one hand, it's a great because you can directly apply for EB1 uh, green card, which is the path, direct path to, um, to um, immigration. Um, but on the other hand, in order to apply, you really have to establish that your business is pretty successful and that you are uh, managing and running the whole department, you know, and this can be very challenging for someone who is starting small business. So you have to be, you have to really be careful what strategy you take because you might get the first year visa, but then you might have difficulties with extension because after the first year you will apply for extension. And in that case, what are your options? If you not are, if you not get approved, then you can change the visa category and go to E2 only if you are from a treaty country. If you are not from a treaty country, uh, you have to establish the business. So it's really, um, it's really up and running and you will be able to apply for a green card later. So um, this is a good option for someone who is already running a business in, in home country and knows what he's doing. Because if you are startup, small entrepreneur, it might be slightly challenging to establish the whole department within only one year. On the other hand, what you could do maybe is to establish the business, but don't apply for the visa yet. So for example, you can still open the LLC and you can hire someone in the US who will be managing the LLC for you while you are living abroad in your home country, managing the business from there. And this person is managing the the office, affiliated office in the US. And after the business is a little bit more established, then you will apply for a manager visa. You will get a visa for three years in that case, because you are not sent there to establish the office from the scratch. 
and you will document that the business is already up and running. So you get a visa for three years and then the pressure is off. But then the question is like, you need to know someone in the US you can really trust to, to, to you know, to delegate all this task to manage the office. So um, you can always find a way. I guess that's my point. You can always find a way and, and uh, you don't need to be afraid. If you really want to do business in the US, you can make it happen. And especially nowadays, it's, it's, it's easier to start business online than, uh, than it was uh, years ago. Actually, that's how I started. Um, to be honest, my story is pretty similar. I went uh, to the US 10 years ago, graduated top law school. Hi, Imran. Hi, Eddie. Um, and after, after I became licensed attorney in New York, uh, guess what? Nobody would hire me. So it was, the economy was so bad and it, I just had difficult times to, to find uh, employment. Uh, so I started my own company and it's funny because even though I was attorney, right? I think they should automatically give attorneys a green card because for the struggle itself and the, the freaking expensive school. Um, so anyway, no green card and no visa almost. Um, and so I had to figure out a way how to actually stay there. Uh, and that's how I actually figure out my own way to apply for investor visa myself, invest into my own company and, and stay and live in the U S legally. So back then when I started the company, I was actually doing everything online and that's how I started my business. And I think because of online, it was much easier. <clears throat> so I was actually practicing law and had clients from, especially from Europe and my country where I'm from originally. So that was the, the, the blueprint, how, how I suggest all my clients to approach this. So, you know, start a business in your home country and then later expand, or if you have funds already, um, then you can, you can directly invest into your, into us. So you can invest into your company in the U S uh, but it's definitely possible and you can totally uh, make it happen. So you just have to trust yourself, especially like if another thing is like you need, I, I know it's important to have a great English skills. Like, okay, you don't need perfect writing English, but you need conversational English, fluent English. So you can, um, you can really do business. Um, again, it depends what kind of business, of course. Um, for example, like Mohammed was asking about the food shop, he would be able to hire local people to help him. So, so at least like the conversational English, so you will be able to hire the people and, and, uh, and get things done at the begin beginning. So if you are considering to at some point move to the US or do business in the US, I definitely, definitely recommend taking some classes, English classes, ESL English as a second language classes. If you guys need any help with that, like I'm happy to recommend people that I know and are great for this. So just shoot me an email anytime. Um, and I think that it's, it's really, essential for you to to prepare uh, ahead of time if you or watch movies read books that helped me very well 10 years ago actually it was more than 10 years ago uh, so yeah <clears throat> habib cl clear about political political visa are you talking i'm not sure what you mean habib political visa uh, you're probably asking about asylum visa. Asylum visa, it's a way to get a green card. Through asylum, you will be able to get a permanent residency. However, I do not uh, deal with asylum um, green cards and visas. What I do and what my office is doing, we are dealing with business owners, entrepreneurs, and um, mainly green card through investments. Sometimes we take cases when we are helping people to get the green card through family, but mostly, most of my clients are entrepreneurs and business owners. 
So that is what I'm focusing on and that is my specialty. All right, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. And I also want to mention that uh, I discuss step by step how you can get this visa, where to apply, how much do you need to invest. All these details we discussed today, I put the brochure together for you where you can um, go through all the steps on your own and uh, get familiar with more details, including my story, how I got my visa. So that helped you to maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, so the brochure you can get the link about this video or below this video. You can see the link and you can download the brochure there. It's free. And if you have any questions, you can leave them below this video and I will answer it after later on. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for watching today. And by the way, another thing I want to ask you, I'm happy to do like a series on how we can break down every step how you can actually apply for LLC, incorporate, what documents do you need, all the steps. If you review the brochure and you might have more questions, I can totally do like this live Q and A's if you are interested and we can break it down. Like what do you need when you're applying um, for the visa or what do you actually need when you want to incorporate your company? So really break it down. What do you need? if you want to do it yourself. So let me know what you think and I will definitely take that into consideration. Hi, <laughs> this is so funny. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Ko Koasim, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so funny. I don't even know what it means that Gal Gadot, but it's okay. It's so funny. Um, Okay, guys, so I'm going to wrap up for today and I'll see you soon in my next Q&A. Bye. Have a great day.